Brilliant stuff. Thank you very much, Priya. And I'd just like to echo everybody else who has uh, given their thanks to Unilever for the invitation and the honor of participating in this very important event. And I am personally very happy to be with uh, at least two of my current heroes uh, from the youth uh, activism and advocacy movements from around the world. Uh, I think we have some, uh, some audience participation to begin with. So if I could just ask our wonderful technical team to put forward with a poll question. So we have this great question. Are MENA youth motivated to take action to address climate issues? And you've got about 45 seconds to give us an answer on that. And at the same time, I will just repeat uh, that if you have questions for our panel, please feel free to type them into the chat box at any moment, and we will uh, be keeping a track of those as we go through it. Now, we've heard fantastic content, fantastic ideas uh, from our earlier sessions, but we need energy to get these ideas into reality. And I'm delighted to bring on board four fantastic young people who have all of this energy and ambition and leadership skills who are here to inspire not just the young people but the older people like as well uh, on how we can make this world a better place so if i could just have the panelists pictures please great and as i introduce you we'll just do a quick mic test just say hi for me just so that everybody can uh, can hear you uh, so first of all uh, we have kekishan basu who has a linkedin bio about as long as my arm and she still hasn't updated it just from this year. On her achievement, she is a Forbes 30 under 30, a United Nations human rights champion, winner of 2016 International Children's Peace Prize, the founder and president of Green Hope Foundation, which was founded here in the UAE. And Kekishan is a, you know, a wonderful product of the UAE education system. So that's fantastic. She's been working in the fields of sustainability for more than, for 12 years. And she's not that old. If you take that numbers off, you will see when she started at a very young age. And she's currently operational across 25 countries. She just received the Nation Builder Award in Thailand last week. Uh, Kekishan, would you like to say hi for us? Just test your mic. Hello, everyone, and very happy to be here today. Good. And I'm just going diagonally right down to Juan Pablo, who that doesn't sound like a very Middle Eastern name, but he is a very special guest here as well. Uh, he is a youth policy and climate activist and advocate, uh, and he was perhaps one of the first UN youth representatives uh, from the UN civil society meetings in Korea. Uh, and he has since led numerous uh, climate youth events coming up with declarations all across back from Korea all the way back to the US over the past four years. Um, he is also now a spokesperson for Education USA and he continues to advise the Youth Representative Steering Committee for the UN Department of Global Communications and he's really here to give us a global perspective on what youth can do in getting involved with policymakers. Juan Pablo, welcome. Yes, thank you, Steve, for that introduction, and, and uh, thank you to everybody for being here today. And we also have from North Africa, the co-founder and president of World Merit Morocco, Mohamed Lahmimi, who is also an engineer, I see from his biography. Uh, he's a youth mobilization and community building enthusiast, and he's been working with the youth for the last eight years in different structures and forms. I think he's also involved in sustainable investments. So, Mr. Mohamed, thank you very much for joining us. Thank you so much for the invitation. Hey, hello everyone. It's a pleasure to be here. And finally, uh, and not least, uh, we have Egypt's representative, Saad Ahmed, who's the president of ISEC in Egypt, and he's leading 14 different teams of volunteers in 6,000 exchanges. He has 1,500 volunteers uh, that he looks after and supports. I think that is just a fantastic group of people, and I'm really looking forward to what we're gonna hear from them today. So I'm going to start off with ladies first. Uh, and so Kekishan, uh, Green Hope, I think, is probably one of the oldest environmental activism and advocacy groups here out of the Middle East region, probably. Uh, and so from your experience of 12 years, um, what do you see? Are youth taking action to make a positive difference in the communities and to safeguard the environment? 
Yes, I do think that. And, you know, the impacts of climate change have always disproportionately affected those who are least responsible for it. And the world's largest industrialized economies that are the main polluters and emitters of greenhouse gases are, and the impacts are felt of their actions are felt elsewhere in the world, the MENA region included. And within these affected uh, communities, it's those who are vulnerable and marginalized that are impacted the most, foremost amongst them young girls and young people. So it's key to look at climate change from the human lens of climate justice because it exacerbates the already existing opportunity gap that's pushing us young people further behind and deeper into the mire. But the biggest problem, unfortunately, is that you know now young people have also only been typecast as protesters, but just striking and protesting will not solve the climate crisis. And what works in the West isn't relevant in the MENA region, especially across North Africa, where millions don't have access to even basic education, food or clean water. So localization of solutions of the sustainable development goals at the grassroots level is crucial. And as someone who works at a grassroots level with children and youth focusing on these vulnerable communities, Syrian refugees, migrant youth, and those who are economically challenged, I have witnessed universally that youth are genuinely concerned about the environment. And honestly, they take to it far more instinctively as compared to adults who often tokenize us and view our capability to bring about positive ground level change with skepticism, which is sad. But honestly, all we need are education and equal opportunities. And just citing Green Hope Foundation, we've planted over 142,000 trees uh, to stop land degradation, uh, regenerated 5,000 square kilometers of fragile mangrove ecosystems and through our environment academies, we provide sustainability education to over 130,000 young people. And young people are making an impact daily, even if it doesn't make the media headlines that only likes to focus on these protests. So what we now need is that mindset change that acknowledges the unique challenges that regions face and then recognizes the localized ground level actions that are being taken by youth beyond the West, such as those youth in the MENA region. That's great. And I see Juan Pablo nodding his head there. Um, you brought up some great themes there of Kekishan, of climate justice, of, of young people being typecast and stereotyped into certain roles. Juan Pablo, I know this is your uh, personal passion project is to get young people into more senior positions. Uh, can you give us your ideas on how young people can do more than just strike and protest and how can they get involved and how can companies help them? Yes, thank you, Steve. I, um, I believe that there is a great deal of young people in the MENA region that are taking action to address climate change. Uh, however, I think that there is, uh, there is a need for youth groups and, and private companies and academic institutions you know, to play a high role in developing new strategies to address the challenges that detriment our environment. And, and I think we should not forget that, um, that as, um, as uh, my fellow panelists, I believe, uh, uh, will think is that young people in the MENA region and in any other regions in the world still lack access to basic information and the resources necessary to successfully develop their potential. So um, I think there is, uh, there is a, a great deal of importance that we need to give these kind of conversations with private companies and private institutions that, um, you know, they need to play a higher role. They need to play a more important role uh, because they have the resources, they have the capability to give these young people um, the platform necessary to develop themselves and to be able to really have an impact on the environment. So um, we, we must also address that those issues, um, when we talk about these issues, we need to understand also the specific realities of each community and, and to be able to understand that we need to uh, go to the field. We need to actually uh, understand at the grassroots levels how young people are taking action to climate change and how can we help them empower and um, 
and amplify those voices uh, on the field. And uh, I think that that's the way we can give youth the crucial, the crucial tools to make impact and in their communities and in the, in the region in general. That's brilliant. And so let's, let's hear exactly what the young people are doing in these areas. Mohammed, uh, World Merit, tell us, what are you doing in Morocco? What are the young people working on or what are you hoping to drive them into? Uh, what projects are you hoping to inspire? So I, I would like to thank you for this question, Steve, because I think it's a yes that the youth are now understand the impact, but not just that, they're starting to see it as one of the opportunities actually to, to drive projects and coming from both of the perspectives of working in an NGO and volunteering world and working with youth on that frame and then again working together with them at GM6P uh, in supporting startups and entrepreneurs, we've seen a lot of projects that emerge out of those problems that we see that are tackling climate change. We see that people are now like turning into basic either basic stuff from recycling and uh, like uh, uh, recycling waste and, and waste management into other solutions that are about more uh, like uh, uh, the, uh, the, uh, in the climate as a whole from uh, the the ideas that we're seeing cleaning beaches to uh, other ideas that are in terms of water and sustainability and for that that gives us an, a, the, the right impression to see that they are in the middle of it and they are actually understanding its importance and especially based on the concrete things that we saw now uh, that are in Morocco, for example, and all over Africa from water problems that are now because of the, either the, 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 the heat waves or it, uh, or just now for the pollution in um, our major cities. So they are taking action and we've seen it from small actions to big actions like hackathons and enterprises and companies that are coming out of this. But the importance here is that, and as uh, Kakishan mentioned, is that we do not need to uh, to copy past like the solutions, but moreover, we need solutions that are adapted to our current situations. And we're in Africa, and especially like uh, coming from Morocco, we know that we have a, such an opportunity to create like behaviors and to create like solutions that are from scratch, because we are at the very beginning of our our like I would say revolution in Africa, and doing that, we have this beautiful opportunity of building not just like recycling or not just the uh, changing the behavior, but building behaviors. And for that, we need more of like youth to come together and structured and more of to be taken serious, seriously, as uh, Juan mentioned, into the decision making process, not just consulting or uh, involving, but more of bringing them into the table. It's great. So let's finally, last but not least, we go to Saad in Egypt. And you mentioned the importance of not copy paste, Mohammed, but of actually creating local solutions. Saad, uh, we had one of the previous panelists, I think it was Ms. Sara, said that heat is a problem in Egypt. I, can, I don't think anyone would deny that. But I also think water, which is Mohammed's point, is also a key point, which I've personally been involved in. Uh, what are young people in Egypt doing for climate action? Thank you, Stephen, for the question. Yeah, uh, I, I really believe that the level of awareness and understanding of youth in the MENA region have been increasing a lot in the past couple of years. And this realization comes from what we are doing here in ISIC. We as ISIC believe that we should place our confidence in youth as they are the only key to unlock a better future. And over the last five years, more than 100,000 students only from the MENA region participated in our global volunteer program, which is mainly working on the human, uh, on the United Nations Sustainable Development Goals, such as no, no, no poverty, quality education, climate action, gender equality, and more. And this is actually a proof that our youth in the MENA region really wants to drive a change and impact. But what I believe that is still missing is the collaboration between us and organizations and initiatives such as Green Hope, World Merit, and ISIC in order to make this impact and contribution to the whole globe better and bigger. That's very interesting that you need more collaboration and that echoes perhaps our previous panel, the poll question of saying who's responsible. But Saad, I'm going to stick with you. What support and skills, apart from, well, you mentioned support, what support and skills do the youth actually need? What specifics? do you think that they need to to help build this sustainable economy okay so uh, from my point of view I, I believe that there are main four things that you need to have in order to drive more sustainable economy uh, first of all sufficient knowledge about sustainability and how to translate it into successful business strategy secondly the ability to innovate in sustainable approaches and technologies 
Thirdly, the ability to inspire change and empower a range of people within your organization to make sustainable business decisions. And finally, the ability to have a long-term vision for how the organization will contribute to sustainable economy. And uh, I believe that we need the support of our government and different stakeholders in order to make sure that this kind of skills or uh, knowledge are being transmitted to the youth. So I believe that we need to work on main three things. First of all, we need to make sure that we are educating our children about the principle of sustainability since they were young. And we are making sure that it's one of their habits. We need to drive more opportunities to use to have more talks and discussion about sustainability and its practices. And finally, we need to support organizations and initiatives that are working on sustainable solutions and give them the right uh, efforts and the right uh, capabilities in order to make sure that they are achieving their vision. That's brilliant. So thank you very much for that side. I'm going to push back up to Mohammed. We'll go reverse back through the path. Mohammed, similar kind of question, but what is the role that needs to be played by the stakeholders, uh, including the government, businesses and academia? What, what's, do they, we each need to play a role, but what exactly is that role? In so, your perspective. Thank you so much. And that's a, such a brilliant question, Steve. And But I just want to mention something that is very important before is that we uh, and to put in place in here is that we are the youth. Our generation now is best positioned to make a change. And for that, we need that to be understood by all the stakeholders around the table in the ecosystem, like by the corporates, by the ADM the government and by the youth themselves because of now we have like seen such a development in the technology and everything and we've done a study in word morocco that it would to answer that question to ask youth like what do you basically need like it, because many times many times when you ask like when, what does like a young person who wants to make an action need you we go to like that we think it's a funding or we think it is like just a, a job or anything but more of like we found that three fundamental things that they need which is like they need to be inspired and that's the most thing and that inspiration comes from the exchange in between gener generations, between us and the older generation, because we understand there is a huge knowledge there that needs to be transferred. And there is another level of inspiration in terms of the, like in the, the level of youth themselves, like between us, like getting inspired from other solutions that are out there and other collaborating uh, uh, on that level as well. So that's the very first point, which is the inspiration. And the second thing, which is that we go a little deeper, which is the connection between the youth themselves. So you need to be connected uh, ourselves and now like events like this and other opportunities and platforms provide that such a, a solution. So the connections and not just among youth, but in the same time among like the other support organizations to the government to be in the same table to connect and talk and be to be taken seriously. And then the third point, then we come to the support. So and that's very interesting because the support did not come as a first in this study. It came as a third point that we need to be first inspired and connected to then to be supported and then to work together and collaborate and then the fourth point is that once we have like something that works and we have either a collaboration either a project then we come to the point of showcasing that and showcasing that impact that came out of the uh, the the the, 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 uh, the uh, the collaboration and for that end it's mostly like the most important thing now as we say it's not the lack of initiatives that are working it's not the lack of uh, projects or actions that is working but more of it's the lack of organized action and us coming together to mobilize and there is nothing compared if we can say so that and then a group of people in terms of the impact i mean that a group of people coming together and working together and collaborating and we've seen it work in and basically here in morocco we've seen that our actions have increased like 300 percent just by collaborating as young among us itself like first with other initiatives and said mentioned this by uh, uh, like between organizations collaboration uh, uh, that it's very needed so uh, uh, to like to sum up i think those three points and four or four points of inspiration and connection then like the support uh, and the showcase are very important and that what drives that that collaboration if we base them on these four principles that collaboration comes out uh, like organically in between youth in and government and uh, companies uh, in a way that's amazing i think going through those four points um, I, I'm looking at Kekishan here and thinking, you know, this is this is what you've brought to so many countries in terms of creating this great youth international network of, of young people who are able to work together. Um, now, you to, to do that wasn't easy, I'm sure. 
What were the challenges that you have faced in actually building out that kind of a, a network for, for young people to come together and, and to deal with climate issues? Well, first of all, I'd like to say that uh, specifically to the MENA region, I think MENA is a very unique region because on one hand, we have abundant energy resources, while at the same time, we are also severely challenged by being one of the world's hotspots in terms of regional war and strife. And as a consequence, the region faces one of the highest rates of migration in the world that's accelerated not only by war, but also due to wide economic disparities between nations that act as the stimulus for uh, migration. And we also have an increasingly young population that provides policymakers with the immense opportunity of generating demographic dividends if investments are put in place in the human capital of children and young people and thereby enhancing their prospects for uh, productive employment and education. But the regional instability and uh, you know, the consequent migration poses severe challenges to stable education and consequently for employment and growth opportunities. So I feel that this is the greatest challenge that prevents youth engagement in not just climate change mitigation, but holistically in all sustainability issues and not just the MENA region, but actually globally. Uh, and I think that the single key change that's required uh, to address this issue is the implementation of sustainability education as a formal part of the curriculum in schools. And here we also require government corporate partnerships that foster sustainability education using civil society actors to complement these learnings to translate into actions on the ground. And education for sustainable development is crucial for bringing about this behavioral change. And at Green Hope Foundation, our advocacy is based on the mantra of education for sustainable development because it provides that transformative impetus for imparting the skills, knowledge, and attitudes to think and act for a sustainable future. And the UAE is an excellent example of this integration because apart from being a leader in implementing sustainability education through collaboration with civil society, stakeholders like Green Hope Foundation, we work very closely with school boards in the UAE, partnering with them to raise awareness and actually create action on the ground. And while youth engagement uh, is extremely important, we must also address the specific needs to enhance the engagement of girls and young women, because even here, it's education that'll help to remove the biases that impede the meaningful participation of girls and women, because they too are disproportionately affected by climate change. And once again, this is not just specific to me in that region, but globally. So education for sustainable development is really the key to solving the challenges and ensuring that we are able to move ahead. Brilliant. And I think, glad for mentioning the migration, I think there is a very good NGO called Education Cannot Wait, which is acting on the, those who are, and the young people who are in that situation. Uh, perhaps we also need sustainable education cannot wait uh, to press on with that. Now, I want to take on to Juan Pablo. Uh, we talked about education and challenges at that, that level, but once we've got the education, challenges remain, I think you would agree. How do young people, once they've got the education, then get into those positions to, to actually make an impact? And what are the challenges that they may face and how can companies help them to move there? Uh, well, I think if we speak in, um, in, let's say, in a broader spectrum, I think that young people in the MENA region uh, face very similar challenges to engage in sustainability issues uh, as young people in, in other regions. Uh, when we talk about access to resources, to development opportunities, to even unemployment, uh, I, I think two key steps towards, uh, towards involving young people uh, in decision makers, it's, um, it's first we need to foster partnerships between sectors and now that we have this conversation which i'm very glad we're having with unilever is to you you know like uh, have this uh have these conversations with private companies on how many young people are actually 
in the decision making table in your company is there anyone under 32 that is on your uh, on your high level position in your company if there is not maybe there is something we need to discuss here and it's the fact that you cannot solve these 21st century problems with people that are not from this century, people that are aware uh, that understand the realities and the problems of this century, I think we need to bring young people uh, to be in these high level positions to be able to understand how to address these problems. Uh, it's kind of including all the sustainability issues and any other issue in the world. And uh, so I, I think the two steps goes first with the partnerships um, between sectors, of course, including private companies, government, international organizations, academia, to give uh, the necessary access and opportunities to youth. Um, and also the other step is um, understanding again, the, re the realities of young people in every community. Um, so before we even um, give out solutions or alternatives or action points to certain regions in the world, we need to first understand what's going on in every place. And I think all my fellow panelists have mentioned some of this and it's just that, uh, you know, we, we can't talk about youth without youth or we can, uh, you, we can we can take action to help youth without youth, including in this action point. So I, I, it's just a very simple, those are just very simple two steps, but um, I think they're very necessary during this time in 2021. It's great. That's great questions to pose. And I'm sure there's people now questioning themselves about those things. Now, uh, we have a short video of some examples of projects that are happening here in the region. And then we have a lot of questions from our delegates. So if I can just ask the technical team to share the video, please. Way before COVID happens, youth in the MENA regions understand the problems that they will face in the future. That's why they have to take things on their own hands to request for the improvements of governance, transparency, security, health, education, and also job opportunities. Our recent research has shown that the current crisis has awakened young people to the risk of new diseases emerging and the havoc that that's caused is really alarming evidence of that undeniable link between nature and human health. Growing up in a digital world characterized by advanced technologies and information sharing, we are harnessing this opportunity to advocate, lobby and lead campaigns towards environmentally friendly policies and practices students making more sustainable choices that would minimize any negative impact they have on the environment. Gen Z is what I think to be the most proactive generation yet. Uh, hence the many environmentally friendly projects and campaigns out there. What, we, what is still lacking today is the shift from the awareness that is created digitally and accessible to everyone to concrete the actions or the solutions that can make difference in people's life. In the past few years, students have risen to the occasion of fighting for the planet and requesting change from their government. The youth of today are heavily involved in advocating for the climate crisis over any other global issue. And with the constant push of government and corporate change, we will be able to see a healthier and more vibrant planet. Round of applause to everyone there. I think it was extremely inspiring. Uh, so we have the Q&A and I'm gonna start off with a question for Saad, if that's okay. I've got here a question that given that a majority of the population of MENA country, countries, such as Egypt, is young, uh, how should climate action be presented or promoted to engaging the youth? How, what's your lessons there? Sorry, Stephen, can you repeat the question? Sure. Uh, given that the majority of the population of the Middle East and North Africa countries, including Egypt, uh, are youth, how should climate action be presented or promoted to engage people like yourself and your friends? Yeah, like as I, as I was mentioning uh, in the first question, like youth here in Egypt and I think in the, in the all over the MENA region wants really to change and contribute to the global issues and their country's issues. But the thing that we need to know, how can we, how can we present the issues for them? How can we uh, let them feel ownership to the issue in order to make sure that they are working on it 
and contributing to solve it. So uh, the thing is, they need to feel that it's their problem, not only the other people's problem. Because uh, uh, we always feel the diffusion of responsibility. If it's uh, if I don't feel that this is this thing is, is my responsibility, I don't contribute to it. So what we need to, to work on in the upcoming period that we need to make them feel that this is our responsibility as youth. This is the time for us to stand as a youth in 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 in, uh, in these countries and contribute and drive impact in our country. Brilliant stuff. Thank you very much, sir. Now, we heard from Mr. Sanjeev earlier how Unilever was uh, understanding that the consumer is becoming increasingly socially aware. Mohammed, though, I want to just come to you and ask you about this. Uh, given that people are becoming more aware of how big companies affect the climate, uh, are youth and consumers, do you think, in Morocco or Northern Africa region, are they becoming more aware and are they becoming more uh, active in the choice of products that they're buying? I think, yes, I think there is uh, this awareness, such of awareness uh, in terms of like consuming and yeah, and the, we've seen that in many, many movements in Morocco that happened, there were like, uh, there was a sense of community of like, uh, I would say boycotting a certain product because of certain like uh, things. So, and we've seen that in Morocco that the consumers now are trying, are using the power given to them by their like uh, power buying uh, to actually like change things and make like certain like decisions uh, made or like make their voices heard and that's something that we've seen lately in Morocco and especially the, the last couple of years that where the people are now not just like consuming and just consuming because they need things but they're starting to make those like reasonable choices in terms of what they make and what not and other things we've seen other movements that are more green and more climate friendly in terms of like their lifestyles not just in consumption but in other other uh, options so I, I think that's very yes and i'm very happy uh, to see these kind of uh, changes in behaviors in the moroccan society and the african society as a whole Great stuff. Um, so I, there's a question here about education, uh, Kekishan. So I'll give you a chance to address this again because this was your particular topic. Uh, do you think teaching civics at school will help influence the youth's opinion of global warming and to be more mindful and active in working towards living sustainably? I think that might be a yes or no answer, but you can... Then let me ask you another question. As a teacher, as an educator, how should I be teaching you? Well, I definitely think that civics is very important and what we need to understand about education for sustainable development is that it is multidisciplinary, it requires different uh, areas and fields of knowledge to come together and uh, speaking to you as an educator, I would say that uh, teaching your students about uh, global issues and then bringing that to the local level and addressing the local challenges in that way is extremely important and definitely whichever field of study is most relevant to what is going on at the local level uh, it's extremely important that children and youth are taught about that and at the same time they're taught empathy so that they're able to not just uh, think sympathize with others but they actually don't sympathize with others but actually take action to address those issues. So I would say that any field of study that promotes this whole holistic education is extremely beneficial in the field of uh, sustainability education. Good. And we're starting to hear little messages saying that we're almost at the end of time. I do think we should have this little message in every corporate headquarters to say we're almost out of time on environmental strategies as well. I think that'd be really helpful. But I'm going to ask Juan Pablo uh, the question, if you can finish, combine that into your closing remarks as well. How would you recommend the youth that who have graduated in unrelated majors to get involved? So if you haven't got a science or a STEM related degree, uh, how, how can they get involved in this climate push or what should they be doing? I know you have many different ideas. Um, you know, I think it's, uh, uh, this is an issue that, uh, that it includes everybody and affects everyone, no matter your field of work or the kind of involvement that you've had for all these years, it doesn't really matter because climate change does not make any distinctions. 
uh, everyone will be affected by this, uh, by these problems. So, and has been affected by these problems. So, in any field of work that you are uh, in, you could contribute in one way or another. And and that's a conversation I usually have with uh, many young people. Is that well, uh, I, I'm working on this field that it seems so unrelated to to uh, sustainability. Uh, why can I do? But in reality, there is always a connection because if you looked in, for example, to the SDGs, to the Sustainable Development Goals, there is there is going to be a specific target within those goals that would be strictly related to your field of work. So what I would, would say is that uh, there is always something that you could contribute uh, no matter what your background is. And also that um, in every step of the way, in every action that you take, it could be either at home, it could be, uh, you know, in your everyday life, you are contributing to climate change and you are contributing to either, uh, uh, to either a you know, amplify climate change or either combating climate change. So be aware and be mindful that every day, every time that you make an action, it might be either good or bad for the environment. So I think it's uh, uh, it doesn't make any distinction. And I would also say that uh, conversations like this that Unilever is having is something that we need to keep continuing and we need to keep uh, fostering because uh, when we include private companies, which are the ones that have, you know, that are, you know, very, very um, responsible in many ways to creating this uh, detriment to the environment, uh, it means that there are companies out there, powerful companies that are actually given the platform necessary to, you know, be more environmentally friendly. So I, I think it's, this is a great conversation and we need to keep the uh, other companies involved and bring it into uh, this kind of discussions. It's great. I love the Spider-Man quote, with great power comes great responsibility. Now, we've got to finish this off, uh, Mohammed Saad and Kekushen, we've got all of these people watching us here, all the young people and all the companies, one thing that they need to do as soon as we finish this or in the next couple of months, what's the first action they should be doing? I'll start with Mohammed, if that's okay. Uh, what's the one thing you want them to be doing? I think I think we are at an age where like young people are like very needed. So and there is a very like a large amount of opportunities out there. So the very most important one thing that I would need is for us to be prepared for those opportunities to collaborate, to uh, to reach out, to act. And you can't you, you cannot act without being prepared. And the meaning be prepared in terms of being equipped with the skills and the knowledge to act and to do things. So go get prepared and like stay like uh, ready for any opportunity once it's there you're gonna grab it so that's the very thing and since we're in the sharing of the opportunities there is one that is for climate now that we have here in morocco it's an it's a it's by youth for youth it's an african youth climate hub that is open now for applications if you want to join and like work on climate but here in morocco and it's open that's for fine. everyone it's brilliant and Saad. I can grant you any anything that you like. What would it be? I think, again, I, I'll be capitalizing and stressing on the point of collaboration. We need collaboration in order to make our impact bigger and better. Uh, I, I just want to emphasize on the idea of being a global citizen, a citizen who wants to contribute not only for his family, society, and country, but also for the whole globe. We always have our ownership to our country or our company or our society. But at a certain time, we need to stand and claim our accountability and responsibility as used to drive that change and impact, not only in our country, but all over the whole world. Claiming your rights and standing up. That's fantastic. And Kekishan, you, you have the last word. I began my advocacy at the age of seven and a quote that inspired me then and continues to inspire my, my work and Green Hope's work is the quote by Robert Swan whose words, the greatest threat to our planet is the belief that someone else will save it has never been more relevant than it is today. So the one thing that I would like to ask, urge everyone to do is ask yourself, what have I done to help my planet and my community? and your conscience will give you the answer, and that will prompt you to step out of your comfort zone and bring about positive change. 
That's absolutely wonderful. Thank you very much. It's very inspirational. And I'm so grateful again to have the chance to see you and all the other panelists. Thank you very much, Mohammed. Thank you very much, Saad. Thank you very much, Kekishan. Thank you very much, Juan Pablo. Uh, we're just going to show the results of the panel, of the poll question earlier. Let's see what they are. Are Armenia youth motivated to take action to address climate change? 70% yes and 30% say no. Well, let's hope that that has changed, and I'm sure it has as a result of this presentation. Now, I'm just going to close up. We've had some really fantastic talks today, and I was really, really inspired by all of the different speakers. Uh, specifically, if we go back right to the beginning, when we were talking about the importance of the, uh, the interdependency of health and the environment, I think that's has, is, is, is a message which I think is, is really important. So I was really inspired by that from this morning. And I think that was carried through uh, in the conversations that we've heard from the youth. But most importantly, the young people have mentioned the need for education in order that they can be prepared to address the issues of climate change, that when uh, companies such as Unilever and others open the door, that they are able to go through uh, and, and take up on those fantastic employment opportunities to help build a more sustainable world. I also think that education from, a, from an education provider is not just the responsibility of formal education. Uh, there are structural issues to getting sustainability into curricula and those will be fought for and they will advance, but there are the COVID-19 a pandemic has proven that there are quicker ways of educating and in building positive behaviors, whether that's in the form of stickers and posters and advertising and public awareness campaigns. So I think in that respect, we all are responsibility for educating everyone, helping to equip uh, the young people and everybody else uh, with the skills to address uh, climate change. And finally, I have discovered that in Arabic, and we're in this region, the word for human beings is Khalifa, which is pronounced Khalifa, which is a unisex word name. And depending on the dialect in the country, it means deputy, guardian, friend of the earth, viceroy, or steward. And it's also the name of one of my very good friends back at the Tisalat group when I was working there. And, and I just thought that let us all take that on board. Let's take those spirits on board of being this guardian, the steward for the planet. Uh, and it's, let's give it a hug and a health check now and then and work together to really create a, a good future for everyone everywhere around the world. And on that note, I will thank again Priya and everyone at Unilever for inviting us to be part of this event and I'll hand over.